What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. Texas A&M came very close to making the college football playoff in 2020. How's the schedule going to set up this year? Is the schedule going to give them a better opportunity to make the playoff or maybe make it a little bit tougher? We're going to dig into this schedule and see uh, exactly how it breaks down. The 2020 schedule for Texas A&M uh, really set up nicely because they played the three bottom teams really out of the East, Tennessee, South Carolina, and then Vanderbilt. And then they got Florida at home. So uh, the, they didn't get a tough draw out of the East, didn't have to play Georgia, didn't have to play Kentucky, didn't have to play Missouri. And then you look at what they had in the, in the West. The West just really wasn't that good this year. Yes, they had Alabama on the road, but that was not a game they were going to win anyways. They got LSU at home. Uh, so, yeah, things went, went worked out pretty well with the schedule. I uh, didn't have to play Ole Miss. That game got canceled. That could have been uh, potentially a dangerous game. So they really didn't get tested a whole lot in the regular season. Again, that Florida game, that was at home. They won that one in a close game. And then Alabama was the tough game for them that obviously they lost. So we look ahead to 2021 in the schedule and we'll see what it is going to look like. And here it is. Uh, they will begin their season with Kent State on October, or excuse me, September the 4th. Not starting in October this year, starting in September, hopefully. Uh, they will start with Kent State, and uh, you see the rest of the schedule here. We're going to first look at who they play outside of the SEC West. So who did they who did they get that, that they don't play every year? And I know you have the one crossover game, but uh, they get Kent State. Colorado on the road, which could be interesting. Uh, New Mexico at home, and then Prairie View A&M. So really nothing too tough in the non-conference. I mean, they should take care of business in these games. Colorado was a bit of a surprise last year, but are they a team and a program that can challenge Texas A&M? Probably not. Um, but it is on the road. It's early in the year. I guess you never know. And then out of the East, they'll play Missouri on the road. That is a, a, a potential tricky game there. It's not Georgia, it's not Florida, but Missouri might be the third best team in the East this year, and playing them on the road, that'll be a pretty tough challenge. They play South Carolina every year. That's their cross-division rival, so they'll get them at home. And uh, again, these are the games that they play outside of their six division games. Nothing too tough. They don't have a, a very tough schedule at all uh, outside of the SEC West. Obviously, the SEC West is going to make your schedule tough every year, but let's go back to that schedule. And again, they'll open up on September 4th against Kent State. They will go to Colorado on the road after that on September 11th. Uh, that will be their first two games of the year before playing New Mexico on September 18th. So their schedule works out where they get three non-conference games before they ever play an SEC game. Three games that they should be able to win, uh, get the young quarterback some experience. Uh, that Colorado game could be a little tricky. Uh, We'll have to kind of wait and see what that what that Colorado team looks like. But these three games should be wins for Texas A&M. Uh, Arkansas after that, that's where they will open up SEC play on September 25th, of course, playing in Arlington. Could be a pretty tough test. Arkansas has a lot coming back this year. That game seems to always be close. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about that, that matchup, uh, but it seems like every year they play, it's close. This past year, it was 42-31 in favor of Texas A&M. That was really one of the the bigger margins of victory that we have seen in this series since Texas A&M has come into the SEC. So we'll find out. Will that game be back to being one of those close down to the wire type games or will A&M take care of business or will it potentially go the other way? Will Arkansas maybe win the game easily? Uh, that will be an interesting one there. And then we go into the month of October. They open up that month with Mississippi State at home. Don't have to deal with the Cowbells. They will get the uh, Bulldogs at home. And then after that, they play Alabama on October 9th at home. And I think that is a big opportunity for Texas A&M. Uh, Alabama could be vulnerable this year. They get them at home. They have some games under their belt to where they should be playing in a pretty good rhythm by this point. Big game, big game. Circle that one on October the 9th. If A&M is going to have a chance to win the SEC West, they will have to beat Alabama. They'll play Missouri after that. This is a pretty tough stretch. No buys in here. Missouri on October 16th. Just talked about that game on the road. That'll be a pretty tough matchup. And then South Carolina after that on October 23rd. So you're talking about no bye weeks 
uh, going all the way from Kent State to South Carolina and then just looking in the SEC going from Arkansas to Arkansas, Mississippi State, Alabama, Missouri, South Carolina, five SEC games in a row, no bye week, no easy, real easy game there. You know, South Carolina shouldn't be great. Mississippi State, I don't think, is going to be able to beat Texas A&M. But there won't be any easy games in there. I mean, it's, it's not like you're going to be playing any backups uh, more than likely in those five games. So that'll be a tough stretch for the Aggies. And if they can come through that one uh, and obviously beat Alabama and win the rest of these games, they're going to be sitting in great shape heading into the month of November. So after the bye week, they will get Auburn next on, no, on November 6th. The game is at home for Texas A&M, which seems like a good thing. But if you look back at this series since... Uh, A&M is coming to the SEC. It seems like the away team wins almost every time. I have no idea why. Uh, so that may not be an advantage for Texas A&M. But uh, you know, when when we talk about these trends and things, everybody says, "Well, no, it's it's an advantage. It's still an advantage. I don't care what's happened in the past. It's still an advantage. You'd rather play Auburn at home than on the road." And they will get this game at home. Auburn's a team that has a lot of question marks. We really don't know what to expect with the new head coach. Uh, but definitely a winnable game for Texas A&M. And then there comes a game after that against Ole Miss on November 13th. I just mentioned a little bit ago, they did not play Ole Miss this past year. That game got canceled. They will play the Rebels, and they'll play them on the road this year. This could be a very, very tough test. If they get through those five SEC games earlier in the year, this might be their toughest back-to-back -back right here. Auburn and Ole Miss. Now, Alabama, Missouri, that one is might have have it a slight advantage but those two back-to-backs Alabama and Missouri and then Auburn and Ole Miss that's going to be the season for Texas A&M in my opinion big games here against a very good Ole Miss team a very good offense we'll see what the Aggies look like uh, by this point in the season if, if they're going to be favored in that game or maybe it's a game that really could go either way should be a good one and again a good back-to-back -back, uh, couple of games there Auburn and Ole Miss Prairie View A&M comes up next on November 20th FCS team should not be an issue at all for the Aggies. And then a big game to close out the season. It's on the road at LSU, November 27th. Uh, we have seen some great games in this series already. We go back to last year, AM was supposed to win easily. LSU played them pretty tough. Death Valley is a very tough place to play. This could potentially be a game between two top 10, top 15 teams. Uh, I think it, it might be one of the biggest games of the year potentially now both teams have an opportunity to to really step up this year and have great years i think there is also the opportunity for both teams to uh, not be great but they're going to be good and i think this will be a great matchup to close out the season so you see the schedule is not all that tough when you talk about the games outside of the division but then you start looking at the sec west and you look at alabama you look at auburn potentially Ole miss on the road lsu on the road an improved Arkansas team. Just because of the division that they're in, this still is a pretty tough schedule. Missouri on the road, another game that could be tough, and it's right after playing Alabama. How many times does a team lose to Alabama and then lose the next week? Look it up. It happens all the time. Uh, you put so much into a game against the Crimson Tide, a lot of times they can beat teams twice, and it's happened throughout the Nick Saban era at Alabama. So those two games will be big, Alabama-Missouri. Auburn Ole Miss will be big, and then LSU to close it out. Those five games probably will determine how the season goes for the Aggies in 2021. Only one loss for Texas A&M in 2020. How about 2021? What will the record look like? We're going to give you a projected record, and I want to make it clear that this is not a prediction. This is not an official prediction or anything like that. This is simply looking at the schedule, putting a percentage on each game, and then just kind of averaging it out to see what the projection would be if the favorites win and the games that should be close kind of split. So that's what we're doing here. And with uh, Texas A&M now 9-1 last year, like I said, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough for them to, to duplicate that with this schedule. This is the scale that we'll be using. So if the game is in white, it'll be a game that's really a 50-50 game in my opinion, a game that can go either way. Red is going to be less than 10%. Then we have 10 to 25%, 26 to 40%, 60 to 74%, 75 to 90%, and then games that are over 90%. And that's how we're going to break it down. So the games that are over 75%, 
will be counted as wins. The games under 25% will be counted as losses. And then we just kind of average out the others uh, with just a formula that I use. So again, there's not an official prediction, simply a projection based off of the schedule. And obviously there are several games that Texas A&M couldn't lose. So how does it come out? We start with the easy wins, the games that I'm giving them over a 90% chance to win. And that is Kent State, New Mexico, and Prairie View A&M. There is really no way I would see Texas A&M losing any of these three games. Uh, they should be blowouts, should not be close at all. And again, we're talking about games where you know, they're going to be favored by 20 plus points. So now we go to the blue, and these are the games that are 75 to 90%. And every game's not going to be the same. Some are to be closer to 75, some to 90. Uh, keep that in mind. But these are the games where A&M is going to be, in my opinion, favored by double digits. We're talking 10, 10 to 20 points, somewhere in that range. A lot of these will be games they'll be favored by a couple of touchdowns. And uh, they've got some of these. They've got three of them. they got Colorado on the road. Uh, I think that one is is comfortably going to go in A&M's favor as, as far as the spread. I think they'll be favored by double digits. And uh, it's, it's an early season game. It's on the road. There are some question marks for both teams, so we really don't know for sure how it's going to go, especially uh, this early. You know, we're in February, but I think it's a game where A&M is going to be favored and they should win. Mississippi State is another game. Uh, they made some strides last year in certain areas, but still they're a long ways away from competing with the top teams in the SEC, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they, maybe Mike Leach turns it around this year now that he'll have some of his guys. But I think A&M should be able to take care of this one. I think they'll be favored by double digits. Same thing with South Carolina. I'd be very surprised if A&M lost this game at home. Again, Mississippi State and South Carolina, both home games for them. Uh, it would be a huge surprise if A&M were to lose either one of those games. So right out of the bat, we got six games that should be wins for A&M. It would be a big surprise if, if they were to lose any of these games. And that means we're already talking about uh, really worst case for A&M is, is six wins. They should absolutely win these six games. So they would have to have a disaster, a meltdown in the other six games to, to finish six and six. But even if that happened, this is still a bowl team. So A&M is going to be, uh, they're not going to be a bad team, that's for sure. So let's go to the next games. This is going to be the 60 to 74% games. And I got four of these here. I've got Arkansas. I, I, really all four of these are going to be closer to 60% than they are 74%. But I do think A&M will be favored. And when we talk about what Vegas would do with these types of games, these are games where I think a and is going to be favored by six, seven, eight, nine points, somewhere in there. Um, Arkansas should be a close game. I could see the spread being lower just because of the games in the past and how close they have been. But, have been. but I just I don't think it's quite a 50-50 game. I still think A&M is clearly the better team not by a wide margin but when you compare these two teams i think they are the better team and so it's a game that they should win but uh, absolutely they could lose and same thing with missouri i think a m uh, is the better team they will be the better team but it will be a tough game and it will be on the road and uh, that's a tricky one there right after playing alabama as well auburn I know Auburn has played, like I said, has played A&M really well on the road, but still when you just compare these two teams and the new coach at Auburn, we don't know how they're going to look. I think A&M will be favored, but again, this is one that's closer to 60%. Same thing with Ole Miss. Elaine Kiffin has done a nice job there already. We know they're going to have an explosive offense. This will be a tough matchup for A&M, uh, but I think they'll be up for, the, up for this task. I'm not saying that I would pick A&M, but when we're talking about just – you know, the percentages here, I think that would go uh, in favor of Texas A&M. And like I said, this is not an official prediction. Some of these games that I'm putting A&M as a favorite, I may pick them to lose. When it comes down to my predictions, I may not pick them to win these games. Uh, but I just think that's the perception, and that's just kind of what, you know, what we're looking at here early, uh, this far away from the season. And a lot of things will change throughout the rest of the offseason. The transfer portal is still full of players. Uh, so these four games, I think A&M will be favored, but it's not going to be by a whole lot. I have one game where I think they're going to be an underdog, and that's the game against Alabama. So this one's in the 26 to 40 percent range. It's not a game that A&M has no chance in. They'll have a chance. They're playing them at home. Alabama has a lot of new faces, just like you know A&M has a lot of new guys on the offense line. Kellamond is gone. But I still think Alabama will be favored. You just go back to last year and you look at that game and how easily the Crimson Tide won. It's hard to imagine 
Vegas favoring Texas A&M in this matchup. Now, obviously, things will change as we get into the season. A&M might be on a roll. They might be killing everybody. Alabama may have already lost a game, and that could change things. But looking at it early in the season, if Vegas was going to make uh, was going to pick a spread here at this point, I think they would favor Alabama. Uh, not by a ton, by six, seven points, but it's still enough to put this one in the yellow. And so I think, again, Alabama will be favored in that game. And then we have one 50-50 game, and that's LSU. This is the one game that I don't think there is going to be a clear favorite in. Uh, it's on the road. That would make me think maybe LSU will be a slight favorite. But if, if I think the spread would be three or four points or less than that, then this is a game that I'm going to put in the white here. This is going to be a 50-50 game. And I absolutely think that this is a 50-50 game. It's one that could go either way. Again, if it's a night game in Death Valley, it's going to be very tough for Texas A&M. But it's it's going to be a close game. I think it's one that could go either way, absolutely. And so when you look at that one, that could be the swing game. If they take care of business and they win these games in purple, and let's say they lose to Alabama, LSU could be the difference in this team maybe making the college football playoff or finishing with two losses and probably a New Year's Six Bowl. So that could be the game that decides it. But having said that, when you look at all these games in the purple, to win all four of those, I think, would be really, really tough. It's hard for me to see A&M winning all four of those games. Yes, I think they'll be the better team. Yes, I would favor them by a slight margin. But winning four of these types of games is extremely hard to do. And when we average these percentages out, Again, the way I do this, it's just a little formula I made to kind of give a projection. Uh, I use 60% for those games. I use 50% for the 50-50 games. And I use 40% for the games in yellow. I just average those percentages out to get a projected record. Again, not an official prediction. But when you do that with Texas A&M, the projected record for the Aggies comes out to be 9-3. and three. So, yes, this is a step back from last year. I will tell you that the percentage does come closer to 10-2, and two, so it's more likely that they would be 10 and two than eight and four, but nine and three would be the projection for Texas A&M. So that would have them you know, probably, let's say beating Arkansas, losing to Alabama. That would leave you with four games, Missouri, Auburn, Ole Miss, LSU, splitting those four games potentially. And I'm just throwing this out there. It may not be those four games, but that's kind of how the percentages would work out. And Texas A&M again would finish nine and three. Like I said, 10 and two is more likely than eight and four, but the projection for Texas A&M is nine and three. Do you think this is accurate? Do you think they could do better? Do you think they'll do worse? Give me your thoughts down in the comments below.